good evening participants as uh, told by dr dipender i would be talking about one of the already been presented by me on this uh, app i think it was uh, it has been quite some time maybe 9 or 10 months ago this case was presented and i would advise you very strongly to fish it out from the app and maybe you can go through it after this presentation so that uh, there is some continuity of follow up so today i am talking about the management of this particular patient or rather the surgical excision of the tumor and the reconstruction of the distal radius by one of the methods which is known as fibular grafting so to recapitulate this patient is a 24 year old lady who presented with swelling of the distal forearm one and a half years ago or one and a half years was the duration of her problem she was operated elsewhere for the same problem in october 2022 but later on she started noticing that the size of the swelling has again started increasing and last year when she came to us about a year ago this was the picture you can see that it is the left side left wrist area where there is a swelling in comparison to the right normal side and this is from the radial aspect you can see there is some swelling noticed in the distal radial aspect of the wrist and there was a scar mark possibly the scar mark of the previous operation which was performed on this particular patient and this is another view showing you the obvious swelling more on the volar aspect of the distal radius so the clinical diagnosis we had discussed at that time was a benign tumor most possibly the giant cell tumor of the bone because this is the third most common site of origin of giant cell tumor the predominant site being the distal femur followed by the second site being the proximal tibia so distal radius is the third common site for this sort of a tumor and these are the x rays which she showed us at presentation on closer questioning and these are the x rays of 26 september 2022 before the first surgical procedure so you can see that there is a there is a lytic area there is a lytic area in the distal radius visible more so on the pa view and to a lesser, lesser extent on the lateral view also the ulna is not involved the carpal bones are absolutely normal and another x ray which he showed us was this x ray which is the post operative x ray and the operation which was performed on this patient uh, was curettage and bone grafting it was mentioned extended curettage and bone grafting and this is the x ray on done on 26 october 2022 so this is the post operative x ray but then when she came to us when we saw this patient she had this x ray after the complaint that she complained that the swelling has again started growing so it is quite obvious that there is a recurrence of the tumor because the radiolucency has not only returned but now 
there is an expansile swelling of the distal radius so you can see the dimension the transverse dimension as well as the anterior posterior dimension of the distal radius is increased it seems to be ballooned out so that is what we call as an expansile lesion and you can see the septate type of appearance which is also known as the soap bubble appearance so obviously there is a recurrence and the options available in treatment were discussed again last time but i want to recapitulate one of them was that one can do a repeat extended curettage and bone grafting or a extended curettage followed by a, a cementing technique possibly a sandwich type of a technique where you try to save the articular surface by putting bone grafts and the remaining cavity you can fill with bone cement the other option available to us was you excise you do an n block excision of the distal radius with a safe margin including the two tumor and do a suitable reconstruction and what are the reconstruction options which are usually available for this sort of a surgery first and foremost is a free fibular graft so using the proximal end of the fibula the second option could be a vascularized fibular grafting but then uh this procedure cannot be done by an average orthopedic surgeon you need microvascular capability anastomosis capability to perform this operation but it is an option which is available to us in such a situation the other procedure which has also been tried is that you resect the radius and you translocate the ulna to be in the middle of the carpus and you are through these the rest in that position the last option which is recently been used and emerging in areas where or in centers where a regular bone bank facility is available where cadaveric bone is being used you can use a distal radius allograft so these were the options which were being considered when this patient came to us but for some reason the patient did not come for a regular follow up and by the time she came to us the tumor had already increased in size as well as if you look at the x ray done about a year ago 24th of november 23 now you can see that the shell the anterior shell of the tumor in the distal radius has become very very thin and there was a real risk of the soft tissue be getting affected or the tumor tissue spilling over into the soft tissue and at this point in time we thought that one can use a drug which is now being used in the treatment of a uh, giant cell tumor particularly the ones which are uh in unapproachable situations like in the spine or in those cases where the tumor has spread and you want to uh sort of limit its spread so denosumab is a human monoclonal antibody which is directed against the rankel and the processes involved in the inhibition of rankel pathway the therapy option is